Hi! This tutorial shows how a C-Sound file is imported in Blue. A C-Sound file is just text. This text is divided into a few sections. By importing a simple example file from the manual, the file oscill.csd, I hope to demonstrate where these sections will pop up in Blue. Here you see the orchestra. That includes the header statements, but also the instrument. And this is the score that includes the F tables and the note events. Right, let's import this CSD file in blue. Under File, there are several import options. In the early days, orchestra and score files were kept separately and you can still load the orchestra file and the score file separately. Also, you can import a MIDI file. But we are looking to import the CSD called oscill.csd. This is the file oscill.csd. This we will import. A window pops up. Choose score import method. It will give you three choices. I always take the last option, import score and split into sound objects by instrument number. This means that the score of every instrument will be converted into objects. In our example, there is only one instrument and only one object. Here is our instrument. All instruments are shown in the orchestra tab. When I click the score tab, the object is shown on the timeline. Back to the orchestra tab and clicking on the instrument, its content is shown. And back to the score tab, the object is a bit small, let me expand it a bit. In some sequencer programs, MIDI notes and audio waves are shown. In blue, it works a bit different. Under Windows, we are looking for the score object editor. The editor will show the content of the selected object. Or we can press Ctrl Shift E for this editor to open. This window shows the content of this object here. Going back to the orchestra tab, I have decided to give this instrument a name. I will call it Simple Sound. Simple Sound. OK. Let's have a look of what Blue will generate if it were to play our CSD file. Project Generate real-time CSD to screen is what we need. Blue generates the text for C sound to render. And as you can see, it is nearly identical to the original CSD file text. The addition we made in Blue was giving Instrument 1 a name. Also note that the instrument in blue does not end with end in, as this is automatically generated by blue. Let's listen to the result. And we hear... Nothing! What is going wrong? Let's check and find out. We need to see the output of C sound. So we need to open the output window, right here. There's also a shortcut, Control shift o so, what is going on? Ah, uh, of course! C sound cannot render the file because the sample rate setting in blue is 41.1 kHz, while my sound card is running at 48 kHz. There is a mismatch. All right, let's fix this. There is yet another window to open, a window that reveals the properties of our little project. So, we click on Project Properties, Ah, that shows the real-time tab and the mismatch. Next to the real-time tab, there is another one. Those settings are used when we render not to the sound card, but to disk. For real-time use, I don't want to use a super high quality of sound. This will take up too much computer power. 48,000 samples per second is fine. This is the sampling rate the sound card is working on at the moment. I have to adjust the sampling rate in the real-time tab and all should render OK. There we go! And we have sound. Ouch! That hurts! 
Not a very interesting composition, but it works. But hey, where are the F tables? We see the note events in the object and we have the instrument itself. We go to Window Tables or press Ctrl 4 to see the F tables. Yes, there they are. Let's check once more the file Blue is generating for C sound. Generate real time CSD to screen once more. This looks a lot like the imported C sound CSD. We have found the tables tab in blue. Only the sample rate has changed to match the sampling rate of my sound card. Well, it all works now. We have activated some basic windows. But what if you have more than one sound card and want to use the other one? Or what if you want to change the audio driver? So where are the options for this? Under Tools we see Options. Under Real-Time Render we can make our adjustments. These are the settings for real-time rendering. 48,000 sampling rate for example. But also the jack driver is one I use. The audio out shows a menu for sound card selections or connections to other programs. Here is my Delta card. All right. I do not want to make MIDI connections at the moment. We hit apply, we hit OK, and Bob's your uncle. Let's check the project properties once more to look at some other settings. The audio out is activated. The audio of C sound will be sent to my Delta audio card. Let's render the result one more time. Let's have a look at the note events. There are four of them and the last one starts at 9, has a duration of 2, so the rendering should be 9 plus 2 makes 11. As you see, the object created at import is calculated to this length exactly, 11. So all is well. We can do several things with the objects in blue. For instance, move and scale them. At the extreme edges of the object, we can drag and scale the object. The note events do not change. All their values are still intact. But the object has been rescaled. It is rescaled, it is smaller, and thus plays faster. We can turn on the snap function of the timeline. Alt plus S. And a grid appears. Now the object jumps from snap position to another. Scaling is now snapping to the grid, also moving the object snaps to the grid and, as you see, the note values remain unchanged, even after all this moving and scaling. Scaling again from the right or from the left, the structure of note events remains the same. Let's tell Blue when to start playing and when to stop playing. The green line is Start Render. Use right click to set the end locator, a yellow line. Let us yet again have a look at what is happening in the generated blue file. A new instrument is created, Instrument 2. This is the newly created end locator. When looking at the score of Instrument 2, we will see it is set at the position we have placed the end locator, 13. It is a very short event. Let's check out this timeline. 10, 11, 12, 13, that is correct. And when we render this, it will start rendering at 0 seconds up to the end locator at 13 seconds. Last thing I want to show you in this tutorial are some blue files that can serve as examples. There is a new menu entry that takes you to the examples folder. We go to File, the Open Example Project, 
and it shows the example folder filled with blue examples. Straight away, I will look for a piece by Stephen Yi, the creator of Blue. The piece is called On the Sensations of Tone. Now there are about 20 to 30 objects in the score, and they are all on different layers. This is a familiar sight. This looks like the other DAW we are used to. We go and check the orchestra tab. There are seven or eight different instruments and they are organized by instrument number. This piece has quite a few instruments. Going back to the score and click on an object. In this case, there are no note events, but there is text. This is a Python object and it generates notes when the piece renders. Let's hit the render button and have a listen. When we look inside this object, here we see a chord with five note events. When we hit the test button on the right, we see the note events that are generated by the code. What is happening in this object? Also a chord, it seems. There are quite a few examples that can help you getting the hang of this program. Well, I hope to see you again next time. Bye!